We usually have interesting tasks on our to-do list, visiting Mars or finding more about Metaverse. No doubt they're interesting and intriguing, but there's something else that is urgent and important. To ensure your applications do what they're expected to today and tomorrow. So how do you do so? By writing tests for your code and executing them either manually or part of an automated process. Does it sound boring or monotonous? No, it is not. Let's see how JUnit and IntelliJ IDEA can help. Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm your host, Mala Gupta. And today I'm pleased to welcome Christian Steen with us. Hi Christian, it's a pleasure to have you present today. Hi Mala, nice to have me here. Thanks uh, for everyone and hello. Christian works with Oracle on the language tools in the Java platform group. And if you have ever used JUnit in your code base, you can thank him now in the YouTube chat because <laughs> Christian has been a long time core member of the JUnit team. Uh, he is also creator of the tool Puck. Christian, did I pronounce it okay? Yeah, that no. was perfect. Johann Sebastian <laughs> Puck was the okay. one who provided so the name. Yes, yeah, so that's the right pronunciation. And he's on a mission to bring Java modules to all open source projects. So Christian, for how long have you been working with the core team of JUnit? Um, do you mean by posing questions and, and maybe raising tickets in their uh, bug tracker? No, I, I don't think so. But that's even way back more in the time of JUnit 4 frame, time frame. But I joined the core team in 2017. So it's about four years now. Yes, and that is a lot of time. Thank you so much. And a uh, little more details before I let Christian take the stage. Uh, please use the YouTube chat to post your question. Christian hates to talk to camera for a long time and would prefer more interaction with you all. So please do not wait till the end of the session to ask questions. Christian will take quick breaks to answer your question. I and Anna Kozlava from the JetBrains team will answer your questions as you post them on YouTube. And the session is being recorded and hosted on IntelliJ Ideas YouTube channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do that now. Last but not the least, if you like today's session, which I'm sure you will, please hit the like button so that more people get to know about it. Christian, I'll add your screen to the stream and let you take the stage now. So here you go. All right. Good luck. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this live webinar, IntelliJ ID and JUnit, writing, finding, and running tests. Um, I prepared no slides. Mahler introduced me already. I'm working for Oracle for two months now. So this is uh, my Oracle head off and my JUnit head on. So I'm speaking about how to write tests in 21. Um, I prepared a repository. You can see it online already here under the IDEA JUnit webinar, under my GitHub um, repository. You may follow on stream live, or you may be skipping some parts and coding for yourself. I'm going to commit and push um, all the things I'm going to do in the next hour. So be my guest. Um, pull requests are appreciated if they are live. So um, go for it. You need a recent installation of IDEA, Java 17, and JUnit 5. Uh, yeah, but there is no JUnit 5, but later more. So let's get started. JUnit 5 is or was maybe the next generation of JUnit. And the goal was and is still to create an up to date foundation for developer side testing, enabling many different styles of testing. And with testing, I have to clarify first, I don't mean using a product from A to Z or testing all the implications that a product has on some social uh, impact or impact on people and, and health and whatnot. Testing is here clearly defined as an automated little algorithm 
trying to invoke a method, a system, a unit, you, you name it. And then we're going to um, inspect the result and we're going to see if that one it, that was expected or not. And because of that, without further ado, let's get started. Let's see if the Java version is up to date. Yeah, it is. And the same for the project. Let's inspect the project structure. Yeah, we, we have an, um, an, a recent Oracle OpenJDK installed. You can choose others. You can download them from here. IntelliJ helps you there. It's a perfect feature to get started right away. We're going to stay in the um, language level 17 today, not using all the new features, but hey, it's test code. And one thing I always do first is root out the compiler output to a different directory um, inside the local idea directory, because everything idea does should stay in one single directory. So now, since we have our root module, let's create a new one, because as Mala said, modules, modules everywhere. And we already got the project module here, so we need a Java module, which is now first taken as a um, IntelliJ IDEA module, and we need a name for this. We're going to choose a short name. That's our basic tests. And IDEA will create a root for this module. And the module file location is not the one for Java. That's the one for IDEA. And like I said before, I want all my IDEA-related files in this .idea directory. We're going to press Finish, clean up a bit, because that was a good guess from IDEA to have a source directory. But we are writing tests. So we're going to create a new folder. and. Let's start with a common pattern and mark it as a tech test directory for um, test sources root. We're going to choose OK now. Ah, look into the path. That's everything fine. Dependencies, we don't have one, just the Oracle JDK 17 module sources on top. And yeah, we got our first module over here. And like you have already noticed, um, we don't have any build tool tonight or today in this hour because idea is fine enough. The JDK brings along a lot of tools and we're going to use those two uh, players tonight. No extra layer of a build tool because actually you want, if you want to learn something, scrap the layers off, maybe um, remove all um, players which are not part of that game and try to understand what's going on here. All right, so we got a idea module, we got a directory marked as sources. Now we can start creating our first source file, and that's a module info file. And idea, yeah, good, chill, good name. And something, what's a module? A module is something you want to put your packages into your Java packages. And you want to say which module is under test. So which system, which class, which package, and the outermost shell is a module. So let's require some module, which are already, already here. Ah, we have a lot of modules to pick from. Java dot, JDK dot, a lot of modules are shipping with the Java SE platform. But Java base is enough for now. Yeah, you don't have to add it. It's mandated anyway, but let's be explicit. All right. And like I said, let's move everything we changed so far under a single commit because we add our first idea and Java module. In this commit, gonna push it right away. And then close a bit more. And here we go. 
everything, everybody um, who's following online might update now the project and code with me. After that, we're going to need a new class. And from my um, plan, we start with a simple program. That's how you do it in Java, right? You need the class, which is in the test base module. So we're going to use test base, our package name prefix. And we start with a hello demo. Because example program is too long to where it's demo is short backwards. So now we're going to use some very old stuff. We're going to say hello, everybody. And that's it. And, and you see those play buttons over here to run a program. If I press it, and I like pressing buttons, IntelliJ starts this demo, right? So we got our first test, actually. We wrote some code, and we verify we get an output. Hey, that's it. That's also a test. If you can write one, we can write the second one. Let's do some math demos. So what about math of minus 1,000? And if this is greater than 0 or equals than 0, I guess we have an error. So what about throwing a new assertion error? Because it's an assertion error that failed. As an assertion we had. So this program should end here. Otherwise, we could continue and say it's all fine. Math demo, here we go. Let's run this one. Uh, if that, that, that goes up. It's always true. Why is this always true? So if an absolute is, is always greater than zero, so if it's uh, below zero, exactly. Let's test again. So you see, sometimes uh, assertions don't match what's in your in your head, <laughs> and so you have to figure it out. I actually wrote it uh, the other way around. Okay. Everything works. Great. And only three things are good things. Let's make a module demo. So let's assume we are in the module which is called test base. And if this equals module demos class get module get name, then that's expected. So we're gonna update this one and otherwise we're gonna throw the assertion error. Mm, wrong name. So let's try this. And then we have not enough example programs. So another one, which is not right. So let's, let's make it more clear what we want to test. So this is the expected name. That's the actual name. And then we are done. So now we can see what's happening. If our expectation is right, 
we're gonna just print out everything is fine otherwise we have the wrong name and then we're gonna fail here yeah okay we have written three tests we verified on the command line that everything works but how do we do this uh, on the terminal of course you can do the same and execute it here or in a size ti server in a batch script and that's all very easy since java 11 you can run single source file uh, code files with just uh, invoking the java launcher just have to find the right directory where the code is in no it's not here it's in this package and yes as expected we see hello world or hello in this case um but now you may say yeah wh what about running all of them and for this idea got a solution we can create a compound test run we're gonna call all demos then we add all the applications we just created and then we're gonna run all of them and you see the hello math and module demo just executed everything was fine just try out never did this before if we have an error on the last one yes we're gonna have an exit code of one uh, and see there was an error so let me commit this as our introduction files and also include the run targets because we're going to need them later so how do we store that as a project file we just say here yes there yes done store this one choose the preferred directory and apply we're going to get some configuration files for idea this is all the same commit we're going to check this in at example programs so programs some demos here we go all right so we, we just revisited a very old style of using and, and writing tests and this is all uh, what's about today but Let's fix this here. Fix module demo. Just want to have um, a working demo for the next part, which is we're gonna do an excursion to Jupiter. So fasten your seatbelts and your rockets, and now we're gonna have a new entry point because that was public static void main. That was the entry point. Um, actually with the string array arguments um string array um parameter here uh, was the entry point for every java program and for the next part we're gonna have a we're gonna transfer the module demo um code to a jupyter test because everything testing framework did and does today is basically providing new entry points. So let's start with a Java class, a new one, which is in test base Jupyter. Um, and now from module demo, it's module tests because we're gonna have some module tests tonight. We're gonna copy the code from here one by one. Um, Jupyter tests, which you may learn from the user guide, don't need no public modifier. We're gonna write some method, which is called module name is test base. We don't need no arguments, and that's it. This should work, right? Perhaps uh, adding a test annotation here. So now everything goes no yeah an idea has a very good quick fix 
we could add JUnits to the class path, but although we could update this here, we're going to take a little uh, side approach because I prepared all the external dependencies and we're going to do this by hand tonight. I'm going to check them even in so you don't have to find them yourself, which is kind of a hassle without a build tool. Okay, let me create a directory which I call external modules. Because we want to hand over the control of finding the entry points to an external framework, we need to have this framework in our project. I'm going to copy some modules. I'm going to add them right away to the um, repository, so you can use them later. And now, ah, still the same. So what's going on, of course, if we want to use some external modules or any module, we have to declare it in our um, own module. So these are the modules we are testing with. So where is it? It's not here. It's somewhere. Hmm. Okay, external modules. How do you do this? We create a new library in the project structure of the um, idea project. We say it's just a simple directory. And we want to add it to test base. And that's it. And here the error is gone. Now we have the JUnit Jupyter module included. And now we can, yes, import the annotation. This is our entry point, our former main class. And now we can just run the module tests here. Yeah, I knew this was coming because only because it compiles Apparently, it doesn't mean that it runs because if you look deeper into the module, you see we have a JUnit platform dependency and some open tests for J dependency and an RP Guardian API um, dependency. So let me copy those over too. And this is what a build tool should do for you. But we now have them all here, which consists of all those. And we're going to add them too. And restart the test. And finally, ah, <laughs> unable to make test based demo wah, 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 module test accessible module test base this is our module does not open test base demo whatever it's a package it's a long package i guess we made something wrong in the setup at least this module wants to reflect wants to see and wants to invoke the message so we have to permit that and because one more thing uh, before going on, I have to fix this. Ah, see, <laughs> it's inside the job. Uh, um, let's move it over here. Mm, conflicts doesn't matter. Ah, okay. <gasps> it does matter. So, once again, because I have a error in the package structure, let's ask idea for help. Jupyter is there. And if we do this, we can have package quick fix. Here we go. 
and delete all the other ones we didn't want to. Now we have our demos here and we have our module test in the expected package. Let's run it again and see the same error again. <clears throat> Another error, yes, why? I don't know, let's rebuild the project. And try it again. Ah, we moved it, but maybe yes, this is didn't got the rename notification. Now we are back to normal. We can run this test, which we couldn't because it what it was inaccessible. So now we can open this package. to org JUnit platform commons. But as we know that we are in a test only environment, we don't have to open all the packages of this module uh, by each by one by name. We can just say this is an open test module, uh, which opens every module, uh, every package in this module. So if a framework you're going to use and require uses reflection, you usually have to open packages to make it usable. And finally, we have our module test, our single entry point, which was a program here and which is now a single test here. Before asking if there are questions on the chat, Mala, um, I will clean up this test a bit and then we're gonna dive deeper into the Jupyter um, API of writing test. So we have expected and, and actual and in this uh, order. So what shall we do to make it more streamlined? Of course. Uh, Christian, do you want do you want me to ask the questions now or later? Probably I misunderstood your comment. Yeah, um, if there are any, any uh, interesting questions by now, we, we can uh, just make them answer, uh, try to answer them now, yeah. So first of all, everyone is loving the way you are making mistakes and then correcting them because everyone is saying, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. Not only in live sessions, uh, that's day by day mm -hmm. work. You learn by making errors and then just keep on going and somewhere green lights appear at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and there was another, uh, um, I would say, uh, a happy comment, which said, uh, Christian is smiling while writing the test. Wonder we could do the same while we write our test. <laughs> <laughs> So that was not a question. That was a that, that was a comment. Right? Yes, that was yeah, a compliment okay. and a good one. And I would like to mention this to everyone. Christian has been an amazing person to talk with, to present. And yes, you can make things happy for you if you like Christian and write tests. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, there's one quick question you mentioned about assert equals. And um, uh, you should be aware about the test ng. Uh, framework that we have for testing. Yeah. Why the do, why does JUnit and test ng have different place where we pass actual and expected values to the assert equals method? Is that to confuse the developers? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> to 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 make you all stay focused. No, I think it's it's uh, evolved over time, and and what's uh, more fluent to the API was and is. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, but I may be wrong, uh, the chat will explode if I'm wrong. So just tell me, Mala. I guess okay. it's uh, in Vanguard 4, it's, it's actual um, expected and ah, there's no flip. In test and G, it's Expected actual, right? Um, yes, let me just check where are my notes. <laughs> yes, um, in test ng, yes, it's actual and expected, and any unit is expected first. 
And, and just to make it clear, in unit five, it's also expected actual. So in this case, test NG1 and having mm -hmm. expected first is, is great. But, and there's always a but, if you use assert J, you start with assert that actual again. And now something expected. So it depends. Uh, there's no specification. There is no 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 ill intent here. No, but yeah, it is what it is. So you have to know the frameworks you're using and 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 keep them uh, <laughs> keep them doing with it. In the case of assert equals, it doesn't matter. Mostly, most of the time, it depends right. on the implementation which object is. Uh, um, called first to the equals method. But let's make this test very small and we're using the JNet5 API here for now. So, oh, okay. yeah. so everything is just uh, working as normal. So if mm -hmm. uh, any questions raised, you just uh, um, ask them here. Sure, and I would let you move forward with your presentation now. All right. So after this uh, interesting question, let's um, make this test a bit smaller. What, what's a wrong name? So this uh, detail message is not very detailed at all. So let's make it longer. So it's the wrong name. And we're going to have expected. We're going to have an actual output. So to see what was wrong. And we're going to have expected first and actual last. It's going to replace the forward keys in here. And if I enter a wrong name, we are gonna see yes. This is a uh, assertion error. So we have expected some base one, two, three, but we got test base. And this is totally wrong. So perfect. Now, what was the first thing the uh, framework got? Um, gave us was a new entry point. And of course, now we can have multiple entry points in the same class, not just one public static void main method. The other thing a test framework like Jupyter is, um, gives you is a assertions helpers. And we just talked about the equals uh, where you put in the expected first, and then the actual last. So this is here. And as we still got our wrong um, expectation, it should fail with something similar we just had. Yes. And ideas even providing a, a, a comparison window where it can see, yeah, there's something different. And that's great. But did you see the change? Now we have an open test for J assertion failed error, which is somewhere inside 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 this method. So let's see where this goes to. This is the source code of the Jupyter framework. It goes into the assert equals method. We're jumping down. If not equals, then we're going to fail. If it fails, we have an assertion failed error, and which in turn is ah, the Java lang assertion error. So nothing changed. It's just wrapped many times. And the code we got here is almost the same as we got in our program. 
So let's fix this test and see a green light. So we can commit this work step and have our first Jupyter test in our repository. So the external module file was not committed yet. The module test was added in UI designer. Man, okay, be included. So let's call this introduce Jupyter platform and the first Jupyter test. Base test. Here we go. Yeah. So let's close the module and the tests and see what's next. Yeah, what, but what about our example programs? We put so much energy and time into writing those uh, little three applications. Wouldn't it be nice if the framework we just included um, execute these applications as tests? And you may ask why? And we're going back to this later. So let's try to pick up those demos. <clears throat> and this is going to work. And by including another module, which I just prepared, we're going to paste it in here. And this is a test engine I just um, provided over here. And it's a main runner test engine. And the main runner test engine does nothing else but searching for classes that have a public static void main string array um, method in it and executes them. So we got it installed. We're going to use it. And now we're going to run the module test again. Ah, nothing happens. But if I now press run all tests on the test module, we're going to see, yes, we have Jupyter here, which executed the test method we just wrote, and the main runner engine, which found all the old demos we programmed as if uh, working on the console, it just executed the main code. So without losing any of our efforts, we just we included um, all the programs we wrote here. So this is one of the highlights and the, the, the advantages of the G, uh, new JUnit platform. Jupyter is a test engine on the low end, on, on the high end, on the API side. It's, it's a framework how to write tests. But if your style is to write Example programs, that's no problem. Just put in a test engine that knows how to identify um, example programs and then it can run it. Right. So, um, Mala, any more questions by now? Because I think that's uh, two thirds of the time now. Um, yes, I have a couple of questions. I'm unsure whether you want to take them now. One, so I'll ask uh, a mm -hmm. quick question. So one of uh, the viewer wants to know whether you would be covering anything regarding testing Spring today. No, no Spring today, no build tool, no other framework. So probably uh, later you could share any link that you have where uh, anyone who's looking information on that particular topic could just go and uh, take yes. a look themselves. Yeah. Um, actually, this website, uh, jnet.org, jnet5, provides a wealth of, um, from, from the source code to the wiki over the uh, links into Stack Overflow, where you can ask questions or, yeah. So okay. that's a very good source for dig digging deeper into this topic, yeah. Okay, so Anna is answering the other question, so I'll let you move forward with your session. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, now 
maybe this is uh, the expected part of this talk. We're going to dive into the user guide now. I have a local copy of it. And you can browse it uh, from the website, jnet5 or jnet.org slash jnet5. And everything I just covered was down here in the IDE support package. And it was down here at the uh, dependency metadata where I copied all the dependencies from and put it into the external directory um, for you. And I guess everything is clean. No, it's not. So just let me add the main runner engine first. So this concludes the, the motivation part that tests are just a, or test frameworks help you um, to have different entry points into your system. So now let's talk about what the JUnit team thought was a very good way, style of writing tests. And the user guide chapter two is about writing tests <clears throat> with the Jupyter API. Jupiter, fifth planet from Sun. So there's a, there's a five gun. It's, it's encoded in the name. And we got and saw the test annotation. And there are a lot of other annotations we could use. And so let's dive into them. Let's go back to the module test and have another test. But this time, a parameterized test. So what's that? That's one test you can um, check if you can test um, arguments, a set of arguments. Yes. Check if package name is present. And we're going to have a name. So what do we want to do? We want to check for <clears throat> a leftover, just fixed. We want to get the module of the current class. We want to have the descriptor of the class of the module. And we want to have all the packages, which are in this module. So these are the packages, and these are the actual. And we're going to see here, or we, we do see it's a set of strings. And all our test is that the set of string should contain the name we just put in. So assertions, assert true. <clears throat> that the set of packages contains a name. So which one? Hmm. Just try it out first. It's a module test. Let's run it. We got an exception again. You must configure at least one set of arguments because it's a parameterized test. OK. The platform failed and told us we need a list of values. Interesting. At least one set of arguments. So perhaps it should say some source. <laughs> OK. The name is one, two, three. And it's all strings inside here. Let's test this again. And here, see, we have a test method, an entry point, which is then presented as a single test. And now we have a test method, which is a container of itself, and a new entry point, which is initialized with one to three. So we Gonna have a, even more. We can have one, we can have more. 
And those package names are not part of the um, of the module. So let's fail this test with a better message because we want to see which packages are actually here. We know them, they are on the left side on the screen, but we want to see them um, in our error messages, which are produced now for two. So this is the set we got, we have. And if we enter those package names, here, everything should be green again. And now we have a parameterized test for a fixed set of strings. So this was already a later um, chapter here. And there are so many other things. It's all um, like 20 subsections. And it's going from simple assertions to display names, nested classes, assumptions, which are aborted, are aborted or disabled tests conditionally. Um, but I guess we will stay inside the parameterized tests for a bit. Or Mala, is there some other um, topic we should dive into? Um, so Christian, there, uh, there's one question regarding integration testing. So are you going to cover integration testing as well, or would you be just working on unit test? Yeah, what's an integration test? Can you ask back? No, 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 no. rhetoric question. Because uh, this is all about um, testing, checking, little programs. So integration testing is n depends on what you define an integration test is is uh, two systems, two units, three units. Is this accountable? So, no, not gonna cover integration testing tonight. So it's just um, basics of the uh, framework here. Okay, and uh, would you? Uh, so that's a follow up question, and then I would let you take, uh, move forward with your uh, session. So, would you recommend uh, a framework for? integration testing, can JUnit do that? Yeah, that depends on what you're trying to do. Um, JUnit is just a, a um, framework to write tests. And if the code you write does something you, you think is in an in integration test, then it's an integration test, yes. But it's not a UI testing framework. There are no browser um, robot control things integrated. Mm -hmm. There is no database access integrated. But there are a lot of extensions that provide those features, and they are all on the JUnit Five website and in the wiki. So yeah. Thanks, Christian. I'll let you move forward with your session now. Yeah. So we are all already on the finish line. So time is up already. Let's see what's uh, inside of the. Um, inside of the user guide. So I'm going to skip most of the uh, um, the, the writing tests, <laughs> actually. So be our guest, uh, read the user guide. It's all in there. We can copy over more sources. We have plenty of sources uh, for parameterized tests. You can have enums. Um, or even own methods. So this is not going to fit into the last 10 minutes. But going back to the plan, I want to show some extensions. Maybe this is uh, interesting to, to close. Um, so if something is repetitive and the API, the 20 chapters I just showed very briefly, doesn't help with your use case. You are free to extend these, um, this API of Jupyter. And the entire chapter five in the user guide is about the extension model of Jupyter. And this is where formally the competing um, 
constructs of JUnit 4, runner, test rule, method rule, and whatnot, um, had a very clear limitation. And this is uh, substituted, that this was substituted or reinvented for Jupyter with the extension model. So let's write a small extension, shall we? And it's prepared so we don't have to care about too many errors. We're gonna have a, a sleep extension because it's getting late over here in Europe. So it's time to sleep. And what about if we just gonna wait some seconds before and after each test method, uh, each method is annotated with a test annotation. So it's inside here. The implementation is very easy. You implement an extension interface. Normally, they have a single method you have to implement. And that's it. You're going to run the entire tests. And we saw, no, that was too fast. Now, how do we activate this? And from the extension we just saw, we just put it on the class extend with the sleep class. And we're going to run it again. And now we're going to see in the tree view of the run that we have. Uh, a longer test run. So if you want to do anything before or after a test run, or if we look into the tree of available extensions, uh, this is not going to work here right now. It's too small. Um, let's have a look in the user guide instead. There are a couple of extension extension points you can implement and integrate whatever you do, um, and whatever you are able to do in, in, uh, in your programming language. So um, we briefly touched how to write Jupyter tests. We very briefly touched the extension module. And there are a lot of other like advanced topics, how to run the platform, how to run um, a, a suite of tests programmatically was just introduced, but let me close with a interesting part here. So value source is one thing we could CSV source. Um, so if your data is available as CSV file, you can put it in here in a file source. If it's uh, if it, it's in a string, we can use a text block here as well. So we have a single test and one to three. And now we're gonna run this again. And now the data is extracted from the CSV source file, or you just copy, uh, copy pasted it here. And yeah, this one is not part of the packages. Let's remove the sleep over here, to make it fast again. And yeah, th that uh, is all I, I could show in this short hour. And I hope you enjoyed the the ride. Mala, any questions to close? First of all, thank you so much, Christian. It was a pleasure to see you present on JUnit. And I think a lot of people found new love for modules and testing in the session because I'm not making it up. I saw a lot of comments out there. <laughs> so thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks, everyone, for attending and asking the questions. Oh, no, we have to uh, ask a couple of questions. Just yeah. a moment. 
Yes. Okay, so we have questions coming in, in now. How can we test control a class with that new J unit five? What link to study that function do you recommend? Um, what was the topic controller function? Uh, how can we test controller class with that new J unit five? Oh, I, I don't know what a controller class is in this context. So okay. maybe uh, I missed the uh, coding part. Probably the person is referring to controller yeah. class as we have in the REST API. Probably, I don't know. In in a so let's skip that. So there's okay. another question <laughs> uh, <laughs> that I wanted to ask. So um, we know that J Unit Four is a single jar file, but J Unit Five is complicated. Why yeah. do you have two layers, JUnit platform and the test engine with several modules in each? Yeah, that is basically the, the evolution and the revolution part. And the evolution was done from JUnit, uh, JUnit 4 to Jupyter inside a test engine, which was some modules, but that the logic resides in here. So this is basically part of what was JUnit 4, which is now four modules. Um, and the other framework around it is to find and to um, execute tests and run tests. And, and this separation is very good to have in the context of tooling because build tools and IDEs like IDEA, um, they only have to know about the platform and the um, um, and this is very stable and very easy to to um, to communicate with. And maybe next year or the the year later, we have a new programming and and um, testing style. And this you could encode into an S, into an engine and then drop it onto the module path and then everything just works and you get your little green play buttons in the IDE and it doesn't matter that's invented next year. So it's very future proof at the cost of having a lot of modules. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And so probably I'll take the last question and then we'll uh, just close the stream. So is it possible for anyone to write their own testing engine? Yes, of course. Um, it's briefly covered in the user guide. It's, I think, chapter six. Plug in your own test engine somewhere here. You can even test your extensions on your test engine with the uh, engine test kit. And that's it. You just have to implement a single interface, find your tests you're looking for, and you have to evaluate them later in the execution path. And then that's it. So it's uh, very, very easy. And I guess uh, Johannes and Matthias just wrote a blog article somewhere on the um, Oracle blog about writing a test engine. So have a look there. Thank you so much. Uh, so I think we are towards um... We've consumed all the time that we had. So again, uh, Christian, thank you so much. It was an amazing session. I really had a lot of fun hosting it. <laughs> thank Perfect. you so much. Any, any closing comments by you? Um, yeah, happy testing, everyone. And if any questions are uh, not answered yet, I'm going to scroll through the chat and answer them as well. And yeah. See you soon. Probably you want to encourage people to contribute to JUnit and if there are any links that they could access to do that, if yeah. they're interested. That is, of course, the JUnit um, website. So if you want to um, help out with the code, with a bug report, you're welcome every time. We also um, have a sponsor's um, web page where you can uh, help us working together. Um, as, a, as a core team. So thanks for any contribution on there. 
So thanks everyone for joining in, for participating, asking questions, and thanks again, Christian, for presenting the session. Stay tuned for our next IntelliJ IDEA live stream. And on December 15, we are hosting another session on refactoring by Sandro. So until next time, bye. See you.